Well, what a year it has been for the weather. Today I'm here at the Hunnicutt Estate in Somerset, where I'll be meeting the National Trust's Head of Nature and Restoration Ecology, Ben McCarthy. I'll also be meeting some of the team here at the Hunnicutt Estate in Somerset to find out some of the radical interventions that they've been making within this landscape to improve conditions for wildlife and for people in this ever-changing climate. Hi Joe, how are you doing? Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the sort of weather we've seen this year and what impact that has had on wildlife. The regular predictable patterns of our seasons are, are shifting. To compound those pressures, we have these kind of extreme kind of weather events like the storms uh, Babette and Kieran we saw in the autumn and they bring in a huge kind of deluge of, of rainfall, which uh, again, just kind of knocks wildlife uh, off balance and uh, adds to the pressures facing nature in the UK. So tell me, what is the National Trust doing with these ever more unpredictable and extreme weather patterns? So the challenge really is trying to understand how we can make our wildlife more resilient to this climate change and these extreme weather events. In Cornwall, for example, we're working really hard with partners to recover the chuff on our coastal cliffs there. Uh, in the Peak District, we're doing major peatland restoration uh, to lock up the carbon and restore those upland habitats. In Northumberland at Wallington, we're reintroducing nature's uh, ecosystem engineers, the beavers, to really help adapt to climate change across our estate, across England, Wales and Northern Ireland. So we're really focused on transforming our estate so it can deliver better outcomes for people, nature and climate. With the landscapes that the National Trust looks after, what has been the impact of Storm Babette and Storm Kieran? So they've just been adding yet more pressure on our beleaguered kind of wildlife. And so we've seen from some of the flooding events, kind of real impacts on things like water voles, where their kind of bankside uh, burrows have been flooded out. And that makes them much, much more vulnerable to things like predation, for example. So all of the work that we're trying to do at the Trust is trying to rolling out these kind of nature-based solutions to tackle both the climate and nature crisis. And of course, that's delivering great benefit to the people and communities uh, who live and work at our places. And so are there any other ways that the National Trust is adapting in the face of these increasingly unpredictable, as we've just found out, weather patterns? So we're trying to build richer food webs. We're trying to make it more messy really, more chaotic, because actually that's what wildlife needs, this kind of structural uh, heterogeneity, this mixture of different habitats to support wildlife and create lots of different kind of niches where they can seek refuge under kind of extreme weather events. Ben, thank you. It's been so interesting hearing about the National Trust and how they're adapting with this ever-changing climate. But um, I think I'm going to go and meet some of the rest of the team now on the Hunnicutt Estate so they can tell me about some of the other projects in a bit more detail. I'm going to hang out here and do a bit more exploring. OK, Bye. thanks, Ben. Hi, Jack. Are you okay? Yeah, good, thanks. What is this? It looks quite incredible. Well, we've got a beaver dam. So this is uh, certainly the largest beaver dam we've got on the estate. Yeah, it's quite something to see really, isn't it? Yeah, so there's quite a weight of water behind that dam. Yeah, there is a lot of water being held up and distributed across the site, creating this fantastic wetland. So I was chatting to Ben earlier and he was telling me about all the great work you and the team have been doing here with the beaver reintroduction at the Hanukkah estate. and. Um, yeah, how's it going? I mean, they were a work in progress. They're continually coming out every night. They'll work around the site, patch bits up, make it a little bit bigger, move the water around. But they can put a dam up in a weekend in a small site. This is two or three months worth of work, so. Yeah, I mean, I can quite imagine that. They are, they're real engineers, aren't they? They are, yeah, they're ecological engineers. They're amazing. That's one of the reasons we've got them here at Honeycutt. You know, they're, 
They're here to adapt the landscape and make these changes that benefit all the other, other wildlife you might see. And so any kits being born? Yeah, yeah, so we've had kits born this year in both sites for the first wow. time, so that's really good news. So the beavers are growing in numbers and obviously the more beavers we've got, the busier they're going to get. And what other wildlife have you noticed since the beavers have created this new habitat? So it's been really interesting actually, we've got some very like definite winds. So we've got things like water vole moving back into the site, which are red listed and really struggling in the rest of the UK. We've got um, kingfishers flying up and down the river, dippers coming in, and we've uh, been hearing the water rail as well calling in here, which is a, a little secretive wetland bird, which yeah, is wow. really lovely. Yeah. So secretive, I don't think I've even heard of it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, you can hear the call in the, in, if you're coming here in the sort of early morning and stuff, and we've caught it on the trail cameras a few times. But yeah, it's fantastic to see all the stuff moving back in and utilising. And it's what we hope would happen. Um, but there's other great stuff going on as well. So we've got um, our, our river restoration scheme, which I think you're going to go off and see now. Yes, I do want to go and hear more about the river stuff. So, well, I'll leave you to it here at the yeah, dam. But um, yeah, cheers. This is we sowed loads of wildflower seed. That's all. So this is all grown recently? Yeah, that's all wild carrot that's taken off. Wow. So none of this, when I was here earlier on in the year, was as was as wet as this. Tell me what you've done. Yeah, it's wetter than a knot's pocket. It's, um, <laughs> there is a lot of water on the site now. We, um, we've created a wetland, so we're, there, were, there was no water here before. And as you can see, there is water absolutely yeah. everywhere. And, and to do that, we just, we, we filled in a river, which sounds, you know, really sort of easy, but, but, but was actually really, really hard. People call it stage zero, it's floodplain reconnection. You're reconnecting that river with its floodplain. What we've done is uh, the river had been heavily modified. It was essentially conveying water through the landscape really, really quickly. And we wanted to reverse that. But there was a method to our madness and it was about moving away from, from drainage, from a, from a single channel thread, which is how most people think of a river. And the reason we're doing that is, is for multiple benefits. So to provide refuge for wildlife. So this is an amazing site for wildlife now but also to develop resilience in the landscape to more extreme weather that we're going to see in, through climate change. And we've got a really amazing and unique habitat here now. Yeah, and what sort of wildlife have you seen coming to the new habitat? So we've got loads of insects here. So loads of insects and, and, and lots of water loving insects, obviously. And that's all food for other stuff. When we come back to the team, you know, we've seen, you know, another, another type of dragonfly or another type of waterfowl, or there's more herons, or, you know, we've got a resident barn out here now. and. Um, oh. It's becoming like a real hotspot for wildlife. And it's not to say that the rest of the state isn't good for wildlife, because it is, but this is, you know, wetlands different. You know, and it's, it's a habitat we've lost most of in the UK. You know, 97% 90, of the wetland in the UK is gone. Um, and, and, and it's important that we bring it back, because for my money, wetland is a real sort of, you know, rainforest type habitat. It's that rich and abundant. And by recreating this, what we've done is developed a more resilient landscape and this site is pretty unique, so I'm, I'm really excited to see how it evolves. It really is quite pioneering what, what you and the team have done here. Do you think it's something that other National Trust sites might be able to replicate and learn from? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I hope we can share some of our knowledge and experience and, and so that this kind of scheme can be replicated um, you know, wider. Brilliant. You'll definitely have to come back next year and take a look and see how the site does evolve. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll be back in the spring. I'll take you up on the offer, Ben. Brilliant. It's great stuff. No worries. Thank you. It's been a real privilege today to spend the day here at the Honeycutt Estate, hearing about how the National Trust is adapting and looking after their landscapes in the face of ever extreme weather conditions. And it's thanks to the support of all of you that National Trust staff and volunteers here and across the country can carry out really pioneering work like this.